Please listen carefully. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the 25th episode of the Study Space Podcast, a show dedicated to helping students like you earn better grades, navigate your college journey, and become lifelong learners. My name is David, content strategist at UniPlan. And my name is Natalie, content strategist at UniPlan. And my name is Julian, the founder and lead software engineer at UniPlan. Today, we'll be talking about some strategies for making friends at university or college. But before I start, I have to ask, Julian, what's inspiring you today? Uh, so recently, actually a couple days ago, as of recording of this podcast episode, I finished my final exam. And that's great. That's an inspiration because I've been studying for it for a while now. And also this class was very involved, more involved than I thought it would be because well, the reason is because my first class at Georgia Tech was computer networks. And I, I, you know, if you've listened to previous episodes episodes before, you probably know that I, I sort of complained about how I was playing catch up the entire semester, essentially, because I had not taken an undergraduate level class in computer networks before. But this semester, I took information security, which is a class that I have taken in uh, undergrad before. So that certainly helped, but a lot of the material that we studied this time around was uh, much more different. And it was much more involved, particularly with the projects. The projects were very tough and they depended a lot on certain aha moments, you know, the kind of moments where like you, you really would not know how to think about it unless you just sit there and think for a very, very long time about a particular problem. Kind of what happens when you stare at a hard math problem, you just sort of stare at it and hopefully you come to some solution, right? Uh, that's sort of what you need to do for pretty much all of the projects. And uh, it, it was a very difficult class, but a very entertaining and interesting class nonetheless. And uh, it's, it's a wonderful class that I was able to study for and I finished my final exams and I am fairly certain I'm going to get a, a pretty high grade in this class. Um, throughout the semester, I've, I've done really well. So uh, happy to have finished final exams and now I get a little bit of a break in between now and the next semester. So that's what's inspiring me today. And Natalie, do you want to go next? Uh, sure, David. So. I'm, as you guys probably know, I'm a pre-med and as part of my pre-med extracurriculars, I do shadowing and the doctor I'm shadowing right now, he's a cardiologist. He's like 70, but he is such a great doctor. He actually inspires me to be a cardiologist when, you know, I choose my specialization, which right now, as I'm talking about it, seems pretty premature. So he showed me that cardiology is a perfect mix between uh, doing procedures, which is when you're operating on someone, and clinic, uh, in clinical practice, which is when you're doing follow-up uh, checkups on people, uh, and you kind of follow up on the procedures, et cetera, et cetera. And he also does some ICU works, which is when he goes around the ICU checking on patients. He has performed surgeries and uh, other patients as well, see if they're doing okay. And that kind of blend is what I call the trifecta. And that's what I kind of want to achieve in my work life. Yeah, so I guess I'll go next with my inspiration. Um, so what's inspiring me uh, this week is uh, Perseverance. So obviously, uh, NASA's uh, Perseverance rover is um, an up and coming mission. I think it's actually launching tomorrow, which is July 30th. Um, and I'm really, really excited for it. Um, it's not going to get there for a very long time, but I do want to watch the launch and, and see how it goes to make sure that the, you know, rover is okay because there have been incidents before where, um, that, you know, there, there were launch incidents. Um, but yeah, I'm really excited for it because there's so much that we don't know about Mars, whether or not there was life on Mars or there is the potential for life on Mars and there, uh, NASA is doing some really great work. Um, on Mars and doing, you know, great scientific research. Um, one thing in particular that the Perseverance is doing that I think is really cool is something called MOXIE. And I think that's, um, that stands for, it's something with um, oxygen. And what it does is it basically turns the CO2 of the atmosphere into pure oxygen, as well as, you know, um, some 
uh, waste products, as you might know, Natalie, since you're, you were a chemistry major. Um, but yeah, basically trying to do that. And that's really important because we can use oxygen for a lot of things. Obviously, you know, there's oxygen in air, um, but there's also oxygen um, that we can use for rocket fuel and, and all sorts of things. So I think that's really cool. And um, I'm looking forward to, to seeing it succeed. Okay, so today we're obviously talking about making friends in college. Um, making friends is something that people don't really think about often. Like, I don't think many people go to college with the sole intention of just, you know, making friends. Um, but I think that making friends is extremely important because you never know when you'll need one to help you out. And um, having friends is, is really important in college, especially when you're studying. Um, because I feel like if you study alone, you won't get nearly the same effect or the same result as you will studying with friends. And so I think it's a really crucial part of, of college that people tend to overlook. Um, so Natalie, um, you describe yourself as an introvert. And um, why don't you explain a little bit more about that and why it was hard you know, for you to make friends in college? I think, I think out of the three of us, I, <laughs> I don't know, I would say I have the worst time making friends because I am an introvert. So, I mean, I tend to describe myself as an introvert with some extroverted tendencies. So I would love to talk to people, but when it comes time for me to relax, I like to do it alone. Like I recharge my battery alone. And I'm, I also commute. So uh, making friends when uh, with my roommate, like you, David, is definitely out of the question because my roommates are my parents and my grandparents who live with me in my house. And well, I, I go to school nearby. So most of my friends are just the ones I brought over from high school. So I don't know what the, your situations are like, David and Julian, but that's what mine is like. I definitely relate to Natalie in this respect where she says she's definitely an introvert who has certain extroverted tendencies. I resonate with that 100% entirely. I, it might be a surprise for a lot of listeners out there that I also consider myself an introvert, even though, you know, I, I love public speaking. Public speaking is just very fun for me personally, which is surprising to say as an introvert, I think it's super strange that I enjoy public speaking, but, you know, put me in a room and give me the task of talking to somebody new one-on-one, -on -one, I start breaking down. And it, it's tough for me as an introvert like Natalie to make friends. My typical tendencies with respect to like making new friends is I, I, I'm usually pretty open with meeting new people when I'm thrown into a brand new environment. But once I establish a very small circle of friends, let's say two, maybe three, um, and then they're, they're closely related friends, I, that's, that's where I stop. Like after I establish that small circle, I sort of close off and that's where I just, you know, uh, I, I, I almost don't even go through the effort of making new friends anymore. That's just kind of where I stop. Um, and when I was in university, when I was doing my undergrad, I was in that same situation. I was going into a university in a brand new area that was six hours away from where I grew up. So of course I didn't know anybody from high school and my new university, I was just going to go into this new school and this new area that, you know, I didn't know anybody. So basically, essentially a blank slate, didn't know anybody. So I, I had made the mistake in high school of being really reserved. I, I didn't really go out of my way to make friends. I didn't really go out of my way to um, join lots of clubs or, um, you know, just do a lot of social things. I sort of really focused on my studies entirely. Uh, throughout high school, save for perhaps uh, Mesa or the STEM club, which it's known now. So I wanted to change that when I went to university. So of course, I, I came in with the mindset of, oh, I'm gonna I'm gonna make lots of friends. But, you know, orientation comes around, and I'm still that shy little kid. Uh, first day of classes come around, and uh, I'm still that shy little kid. So it, it's definitely tough for me to, to make friends. So uh, we'll be talking about all of those stories today during during this episode. Yeah, so I mean, both of you guys describe yourself as introverts. I'm I consider myself more of an extrovert myself, although um, 
some of my friends actually do think that I'm an introvert. I don't know why. Maybe it's because I spend a lot of time by myself. But uh, no, I, I feel pretty comfortable usually making friends. Um, and I, I also like public speaking, um, just as Julian does. Lo did lots of public speaking competitions um, in high school. Um, but even, even with that being said, it was actually pretty hard for me at the beginning to make friends. And um, this is why we're, we're making this, because I think no matter who you are, just meeting new people and kind of going up to them is difficult. Even if you're the most extroverted person in the world, um, there's going to be situations that make you feel very awkward. And um, I'd say that there are definitely methods and ways where you can make that kind of, you know, I, won't, I don't want to say confrontation, but that experience easier on yourself. Um, that's why we're giving you six tips today to, to make friends in college. Um, now, tip number one is, um, it's an interesting one, and it's special programs. So anything like pre-orientation or orientation. Um, I think that, in my opinion, this is the easiest way to make friends uh, by far. So um, all of my current friends were actually in a pre-orientation program. Um, so I think they did something called Hopkin Core, which is uh, sort of a community service thing where you just... Uh, for the week before school, um, before orientation, I should say, um, you kind of just go around Baltimore and you do service projects and you get to spend a lot of time with the people in your group um, and the leader of your group. And I heard it's a really fun experience. I never did it myself, but uh, everybody who did it seemed to really enjoy it, um, mainly because of the people, but also because of the work that they got to do. Um, so if you can do one of these in your college, I think this is one of the easiest ways to really make friends because you're really encouraged um, to make friends in this in, in these types of programs. I hesitate to use the word forced because I don't think you're necessarily like forced to make friends, but it's really difficult when you're all in the same group for a week and those are the only people you're seeing. Like they were literally banned from using their phones, but apparently none of them even missed it. They said it was actually pretty easy because they're with their friends. And um, yeah, it's it seemed like a really fun experience. And I think that if you are someone who's not really good at, you know, going up to people, approaching them, doing this type of thing uh, makes it a lot easier for you. Um, and also, uh, I know that I had an orientation group as well. So I was able to meet a lot of people from there. Um, and this is a little harder, I think, than a pre-orientation group because you only spend like a few days in orientation and you're not really spending the entire day with them. It's more like just portions of the day. Um, because you're spending most of your time at kind of the events um, by yourself. Uh, but I think that orientation is also a great way to meet friends if you can. Um, and I was very lucky because through my orientation group, I made a few friends there and they were in able to introduce me to their friends who they met through their pre-orientation group. So I got pretty lucky in that regard. And I had like a lot of uh, a, a large group of friends um, at the very beginning um, of school. So I came in not really having uh, too much to worry about if I ever needed help with homework or if I needed someone to talk to or something like that because I already knew um, these people. So yeah, but Natalie, you you had a negative experience at uh, one of these programs. So why don't you give your experience and, and tell you why it really didn't help you? Uh, definitely. So I had a negative experience with my orientation. Uh, just to give you some background, orientation at my school, UCI, is pretty big. So you're put in a group with like maybe 30 other uh, freshmen and you're expected to kind of a board or room with one overnight. So you have one roommate overnight. And <laughs> funny story. So I got to orientation pretty early and I got to my room. I was the first one in my room. So I put my bags and like my clothes for me to stay overnight onto the bed that I wanted, which is the window side bed. And then in comes my roommate. She basically plopped her stuff on top of my stuff, disregarding at my bags that I've already put onto my bed. And then when I came back to the room, she basically apologized and just took the bed. Now, I don't even know her name because I didn't say the night. I think that experience really scarred me from dorm dorm life and just having a roommate in general. So I left early with one of my high school friends who I carpooled with to orientation and I just left after dinner. Yeah, that was pretty nightmarish, in my opinion. Wait, so hold on, hold on, hold on. So did you end up making any friends from orientation at all? 
I met one girl and basically I exchanged some contact info with her and then we never spoke again. That was it. My friend that I quote unquote made was from high school and we basically knew each other since we were in 10th grade and we go to college and now we're pretty close, but that was it. I had the worst experience at orientation. Gotcha. Well, that's too bad. That's too bad. Orientation is, I mean, it, it's, it was pretty nerve wracking for me too. So I can see how it can sort of turn into uh, a bad experience. Wh whoever that girl was, she's, you know, obviously not the most considerate person, let's say. Uh, so I'm sorry that you had a, a bad orientation experience. Um, so as I understand it, from what you're, from what you're saying, was yours uh, like a, like a two day orientation where you stayed overnight? Yeah, it was just like one night, but I feel like after the whole event of the day, I was super tired and I just did not like the dorm I was living in. So I basically told my friend, I asked him if he wanted to go and we both agreed that we just wanted to go home because he's also extremely, extremely introver introverted. I think even more so than I am. And then we basically made a pact. Like if one of us wanted to go home, we'll both go home. And that person first was me. I thought it was going to be him, honestly. But yeah, and we had dinner together and then we just caught a ride. <laughs> Gotcha. Well, okay. So David was saying earlier that it's by far the easiest way to make friends and that can certainly be the case. But in Natalie's case, it was the easiest way to identify which friends to keep up with and which people to uh, avoid. And, and that can be a valuable experience as well. Right. For me, my orientation was actually kind of similar to, to Natalie's. I, I don't know if, I don't remember if David and I talked about our orientation programs, David was your, uh, JHU orientation also a two day thing? No, it was like four days. I think it was almost a week. Yeah. Oh, whoa. Okay. Wow. Jeez. Okay. So yeah. Yeah. All right. So your orientation is obviously much longer than, than, uh, mine and Natalie's, but, uh, my orientation at SJSU San Jose state university, uh, go Spartans. It was also a two day program. So First day, you're expected to arrive on campus uh, sometime in the morning before before noon to check in to your dorm. So it, it was uh, we got one of the suites. We were expected to dorm with I think three or four other students as well. Um, the the thing about that was it's you're you're not like matched up with anybody that's like. Um, it's not like by name or by ID number or anything. It just, you know, you just put, get put to, uh, whoever you happen to stand in line with, which is kind of funny. So, uh, I, I basically ended up, uh, going into a suite of, I think it was either two or three bedrooms in an entire suite. So it was just one apartment that was like, basically it was an apartment with a kitchen and a living room and like a couple bedrooms. And then that was the suite. And then you stayed with your suite mates for just a night. Uh, so the weird thing is I actually like don't remember any of the people that I, I dormed with for that night, but I do remember the people that I, I attended orientation with. So it, I, I know it's like really confusing and weird, what am I, whatever I'm explaining right now, but the people you stayed with overnight were, were not the people that you, um, <laughs> that you attended orientation with. It's, it's kind of strange. So my actual orientation group, now they were great. Uh, I, I met uh, one person right away that um, I sort of, you know, latched on to uh, as like my go-to person if I ever got lost or felt nervous about meeting anybody else. I mentioned earlier that, you know, I'm pretty open at first when I don't know anybody. Uh, and then once I establish that, you know, small circle, I sort of close off. That's what I was trying to do at this point. So met this one other guy. He was really nice and we were talking, you know, it's sort of like we're standing in line together, so we might as well talk. Uh, so I, I, you know, we got friendly. So that was, you know, that was my go-to. And then met the rest of the orientation group, met more people. And, uh, you know, it's a school in the Bay Area, right? So it's very typical that a great many of the students in my orientation group happen to be in engineering. So we can resonate on that respect. 
So I ended up befriending a couple more people who are also computer science or software engineering or really any other engineering discipline. Uh, so I befriended a couple of those people and, um, you know, ended up taking a couple classes with those individuals as well. Uh, I don't keep up with them anymore, but they were instrumental to my feeling comfortable as I stepped onto campus before classes actually started. So I definitely agree with David here that it's it can be one of the easiest way to make friends because orientation programs like these typically put you into a small group where you sort of explore the school or you do some activity or a set of activities together in that small in that small group. So it sort of opens you up. Uh, it, it, you know, David said earlier that he hesitated to use the word forced. Uh, and, and, you know, I, I would probably agree with that. It it really does heavily encourage you to interact with your orientation group. And that's that's exactly what happened. So I definitely felt part of the campus community. It opened me up and it sort of uh, gave me uh, a sort of mental model about what to expect when I'm meeting new people at the school. Right. So that was a good experience for me. So special programs, particularly those that have to do with orientation or pre-orientation, uh, can be a great way to make new friends, certainly. Yeah, definitely. Um, and the second point that I have, the second tip is um, this is actually Natalie's point. So um, you can go ahead and explain it, Natalie, but it's to be brave and initiate the conversation with the people sitting near you in a lecture. So typically during college, a lecture would be uh, 400 students, for me at least, a general lecture, crammed in a room together. So you end up sitting, probably you'll sit next to people uh, on your sides. And I would just like to befriend and talk to those people. Obviously, not all of the people I talk to will become my, friend, my friends, but I, I would like, you never know. You'll never know when you meet a friend. So I just you know, cast my net wide and hopefully, you know, I'll catch a good one. And if you do start a conversation and if it does get a little awkward, you'll probably rest easy knowing that you'll probably never ever see that person ever again. So that kind of impression is just thrown away, so to speak. But if you quote unquote catch a good one, then you'll have, you know, a friend for the next year or so or your whole life even. Yeah, I actually made one of my very, very, very best friends in my computer science lecture hall. It was introductory computer science. It was the first class that you take in the computer science track. All the freshmen were there, basically. And I actually didn't meet this girl until several months in. I, I, was, uh, I, I was the kind of kid that was like, Everybody was sort of telling me, especially my orientation leaders, like they're everybody, all the upperclassmen were telling me like, hey, take it easy your first year, no rush, you know, like have fun, join clubs, do activities and stuff. And I was like, yeah, but I kind of also want to graduate. So I don't know if I want to like do all of these activities and take it easy, quote unquote, on my freshman year, because then if I take it easy in my freshman year, who's to say I won't take it easier as the years go on? Right. So I wanted to start off university in a strong way so that I set myself up for success. And so that if I do get tired later on, at least I started out strong. And so then I can, you know, build up that sort of pattern cadence with university. Right. So I, I was a kind of kid that like went to school, went to class, did homework, go to library, study, go home, study, do homework, sleep, go to school. So I didn't really go out of my way to like meet anybody in class necessarily, which was kind of a mistake, but eventually I did so. And it, we, you know, we started talking about the textbook. It was like a couple months into, into school. And uh, at this point we, we should have purchased our textbooks already. And this one girl who sit, who sat in front of me in lecture hall, which is strange because Natalie said earlier that you typically talk to the people to your sides because it's it's in rows, right? So the lecture hall's in rows. Uh, you sit in rows. And so the person in front of you isn't exactly going to, you know, it's kind of annoying to have to turn all the way around to talk to somebody, right? But I just happened to over overhear her talking about like, oh, like, I'm not sure I got the right textbook because... Um, you know, the professor said that there was a digital version of te the textbook, so you can just buy an access code and then get an ebook instead of getting the actual textbook. 
and she was just concerned that she got the wrong one. So I overheard her and, and we started talking about the textbook and the different versions. And, and then, and then what's funny is that, um, either that day or the day after, or sometime very soon after that, there was a fire drill. And so we all had to evacuate the building in the middle of lecture. Uh, for a fire drill in the building. And so as we were walking out, we decided to stand near each other because she also is pretty shy as well. So we, you know, it, 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 you're sort of seeing a pattern here, right? Like you meet one person, you sort of latch onto them and then you, you befriend them, right? So, so I talked to this one girl, she talked to me and then fire drill happens and then we just had to evacuate together, right? Sounds like the start of a romance story, but hey, I'm gay, so that didn't really work out. Um, but we ended up becoming the best of friends. She she and I still keep up. Oh, everybody knows we still keep up today and we still hang out. Uh, we still play games together. It's it's a she's definitely one of my best, best friends to this day. Um, so definitely be brave and start conversations, no matter how small or trivial especially if you're shy. And if you happen to uh, reach somebody who is also shy, then they're probably, they're, they will probably breathe a, a breath of relief because somebody decided to initiate a conversation so they don't have to go through the mental hurdle of doing that. And then you guys are gonna end up being best friends. That's, that's just what happened with me and this particular person. Um, and uh, I appreciate her as a friend because we've taken classes together. We've gone through university together. We've gone through so much drama and, and weird stuff and you know dramatic anger inducing stuff throughout university. Uh, went through very, very difficult classes, which we'll talk about later as well. Uh, and that only, that only solidified our relationship, which I definitely appreciate. So, uh, so what about you, David? Because then I feel like Natalie and I, we've had similar experiences in this respect, right? Talking to people in, in lecture. What about you, David? Yeah, so I actually um, didn't make that many friends. This is really surprising, right? Because you'd probably expect me to talk to everyone next to my lecture, but I actually didn't because um, I had already made a lot of friends uh, just you know during orientation and during pre-orientation. So I actually knew a lot of the people in my classes and I just ended up sitting next to them. So I didn't really have to like make friends at all. I, I was already friends with the people I was around. So um, there was no point in like, you know, going to other places and, and trying to make new friends, um, in my opinion, at least, because I already had friends in those classes. So yeah, I never really had to do this. I was pretty lucky. Um, but outside of friends, outside of class, I, I have um, made a lot of friends. Um, this is usually during stuff like uh, tutoring sessions, for instance. There's a program called Pilot at my school. And that's a program where you and a small group of students get tutored by someone who got an A in the class previously. Um, and um, in this in this um, program, I actually did make a lot of friends. And also, um, I basically uh, was able to talk to a lot of people in something called the ECE lounge, which is the Electrical and Computer Engineering Lounge. I just go there and, uh, sometimes because they have free coffee, which is really nice. Um, and they have just like really a really nice study area. So I just go there and kind of do some homework. And I ended up talking to a lot of upperclassmen there. Um, and they were really, really helpful um, helping with my homework and everything. And uh, really great at giving advice for what classes I should take in the future and, and you know, what I should do um, to, you know, more easily get an internship or a job. And so they were really helpful. And uh, yeah, I think this is another way I made friends. I, I don't really talk to people during lecture, but outside of class in, I guess, academic environments, I still was able to make a lot of friends. Can I make a comment about that? Natalie, you chime in too, because I want to know if anybody else in the world has the same sort of feeling about this as I do. So David, you mentioned that you had already made friends before coming to class. So you just sat with those friends going into lecture, right? Which right. is fine, which is, you know, what you're supposed to do. I should hope that you you sit with your, your friends after you find some friends so that it makes the experience of going to class, especially your first days on university, uh, better and more comfortable. But for me personally, somebody who, who goes into a new school, especially a new area where you don't know anybody, it's essentially a blank slate, it's really intimidating for me. And this is in no way your fault, David. So like, don't feel like I'm trying to come, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not trying to come for you or anything, but 
I'm trying to express how I feel when I see other people already having friends in university or any really any other environment. Like everybody's already talking to each other. Everybody already seems to know each other. So then it, it just feels really intimidating for me because I feel like I'm pushing in or or like everybody already has their friends. So like they're not going to be interested in, in becoming friends with me. So I, I want to know if anybody out there feels the same way as I do, because when I walk into a new classroom or when I walk into a new lecture hall and everybody's already conversing with each other, I'm just like, OK, all right. So that's a signal for me to sit in the corner and to keep to myself because everybody already has their friends. So I'm just going to be over here on my lonesome. I don't know. You guys chime in on that. I, I want to know if I'm the only one that, that feels that way. I definitely do feel that way when I'm especially when I'm going into a new a new class and I haven't I don't have any friends in that class but I I am like David so one of my best friends here at UCI we met each other before we even started um school and she's also a chem major and that's how we kind of connected with each other I won't say her name because you know she's pretty introverted herself but she is the sweetest girl ever she actually approached me first which is very weird because she's also very shy and so we started bonding a lot through text and this is through Facebook messenger and so yeah we started bonding a lot and like she would we would just sit together wherever we went. We, um, whenever we have a, we had a class together, we would always sit next to each other, and we would basically just bubble. We would create a bubble and just zone everyone else out. But I also have another friend. Um, he's extremely, extremely, extremely extroverted. I think even more so than David. And we met because we were waiting in line, waiting for another class to finish to enter our own classroom. What he does is that he, even though he has me um, in the same class as he is, he would just um, look behind him or look to his side and talk to the person or the people around him. And the, he would then rope them in somehow, I don't know how he does it, into his conversation with me. And then we would all have this natural group conversation together. He is a wizard with people, I swear. I have definitely met those people in university. And unfortunately, that will never, ever be me. I could never do that. <laughs> I can never loop new people into a conversation. Uh, just, you know, I, I've just never been able to find a, a graceful uh, a, a graceful way to do that. Um, but before we move on to the next tip, I actually do want to mention one thing. So we're talking about initiating conversations with people sitting near you in your classroom or in your lecture hall, right? So, uh, and we also, I guess, tangentially mentioned about how you sort of latch on to people that you meet uh, and, and people that you recognize. And for me, actually, now that I'm talking about it, it sort of reminds me of another thing that I, I do is that when I do enter a new classroom, it's like a new semester, right? You go to a new class, um, I sort of automatically scan the entire room for somebody that I recognize, not necessarily somebody that I uh, that that is a friend of mine, but I just scan the room for anybody that I recognize from, from a previous class, uh, somebody that, I don't have to necessarily talk to, but I just recognize them from a previous class that we took together, right? And then if I see that person, then I'll just gravitate towards them. I'll say like, hey, weren't you in that other class? And then he becomes, he or she becomes the the new friend that I go to for that one class. Uh, so this is, uh, you know, this is something that I've experienced a lot because I've, you know, I've already graduated from university. Perhaps you two haven't really experienced that too much, but this is something that I have done uh, many times throughout all of my semesters is, is I just scan the classroom for somebody that I happen to recognize from a previous class or a club or, or something that we've done. And then I'm like, hey, aren't you from, you know, CS 151? And then we start conversing from there. And, and, and then uh, hopefully that blooms into at least a partner for a team project. And then if it, if, if it becomes friendship, then hooray. But I'm sorry, I'm, I'm looking out for a, a team project partner here. So, uh, you know, full disclosure, if there's a team project looking for a partner, uh, and if that sends into a friendship, great, wonderful. But, you know, find people that are sitting next to you, converse with them. Uh, you might, you might, if you take in initiative, they will probably appreciate the fact that you have taken initiative to converse with them. And then that uh, will hopefully bloom into a wonderful friendship. Yeah, no, I actually definitely agree with you. I, I tend to do that too. Uh, I, I remember like 
um, I actually had a um, I had a friend who was in rocketry and I noticed that he was in rocketry and then um, so then when I was actually sitting in calculus um, one day I actually noticed him at the front and I was like hey can I sit here and then I was just like hey are, like aren't you in rocketry too I saw you at the team meeting the other day he was like yeah and then we just started talking about that and then uh, you know other things just like the class in general and everything uh, before class is starting so yeah that's a uh, that's kind of another friendship so I think uh, we as people just tend to gravitate towards familiarity. And so that's why I think we do that kind of stuff where we we gravitate towards people we already know, even if it's not like we know them personally. But if we have seen them somewhere or if we think that we share something in common, it's a lot easier to approach because then at least you have something to talk about. Right. Because if you sit next to someone totally random, it's kind of hard to start a, start a conversation out of nowhere. I know some people are really good at doing it, but like. You know, not everybody can. So I definitely think that that's um, a really good tip if if you're um, not the most extroverted person and you want to find at least something that you have common ground on. So that's a pretty good tip. And that brings me to the third tip, which is scheduling study dates. That's what I call them at least, and doing assignments together. So I like to say this. Friends who suffer together stay together. And I think that's a pretty true statement. So I had this class, it's called Analytical Chem, and it is probably the worst class that I've experienced in my one short year of university. And I was able to connect with a lot of other chem majors who are also struggling. So we would probably meet, not meet up, but we would schedule a time and then we would work on our worksheets together and I would message them with my questions and they would message me back and then it would it created this whole web where we did this assignment together and it was so fulfilling because I was able to strengthen my connection with um, my chem friends who I I knew from class from chem which is a very small major so I basically know a lot like most of the people in chem but this really really strengthened our relationship because, you know, we cried over these worksheets together and we were angry about those tests together. I don't, um, what about you, Julian, about your um, computer and architecture? Yeah, yeah. So I have here in the show notes that um, computer architecture is a similar experience for me. You, when you said friends who suffer together stay together, I laughed. Uh, I was muted, but I laughed because it so happens that all of the friends that I consider are like very, very close friends today, or like save for one, actually, I have one good friend that, that wasn't in this class, but every other friend uh, happens to be a computer science major or a, a software engineering major. And all of those friends together took a, a class known as computer architecture, or it was called computer organization, but but we'll call it computer architecture because there were actually two classes. There was an under, uh, sorry, not an under, a lower div, a lower division version of the class, and then there was an upper division version of the class. So not only did you have to take one of these computer architecture classes, you had to take two of these computer architecture classes. And I don't know what it is about this class. Maybe it's the professor or maybe it's the material or maybe it's just me, but computer architecture is infamous at my university for being one of the most rigorous classes in the program. It's, it's just, it, it's a very daunting class. You don't really, you don't really know what you're in for when you register for this class. And unfortunately, these two classes are required. So there's no way you can skip them. There's no way you can sort of substitute them. I think you can actually substitute the lower division one if you take it at a community college, but you definitely have to take the upper division one. And according to people that I talk to, if you transfer the lower division credits from a community college, you'll definitely, or at least you'll be more likely to fail the upper division version because you just haven't gone through the rigor of the lower division version. So if you want to pass, then you have to go through the grueling two classes that are the computer architecture classes. So these two classes, I've already, hopefully I've expressed how daunting, how difficult these two classes are. It just so happens that all of my computer science friends, all of my very, very good friends to this day took that class with me. So the first class, the, the lower division one was where I, I, I met 
essentially all of my very good computer science friends today. My best friend is included in one of them because we just registered for that together. Um, and so then here it, it was like I had I had her and then she had some, uh, I think two, one or two friends from high school that were also computer science majors. So then uh, I, I sort of befriended those people because they were her friends, so I wanted to be included. So I befriended them. And then I had a friend from calculus who was also a computer science major and he was taking this class. So I was already friends with him from calculus. And then he had a mutual friend, so then I befriended him. And then now we're all this, this circle of like six, seven, eight friends. And, and, and now we were all suffering through this very, very difficult class together. And then after we finished that, we, we had to take the upper division version. And then I think, let's see, one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, so five of us, I think about five of us, took the upper division class together. Other people, I think the other guys wanted to wait until later. They wanted to take other classes before they took the upper division version. We decided to take it together again. Um, and then we just, you know, it sort of solidified our friendship even more because we took the lower division one and we thought we were prepared for the upper division one, but holy cow, the upper division version of computer architecture was so much more grueling than the lower division one. And I already thought the lower division one was very bad, like very, very just hard, very difficult. The second one was even harder than that. We had a lot of these study dates, as you call them, though they were less study dates and more complaining dates because we would just sit together and complain about the homework or complain about the exam or complain about the projects. Um, a, a lot of, a lot of, let's say, colorful language was thrown around as we were working together on these projects because it was so hard. But at the end of the day, we bonded. And I think those two classes have a lot to do with how close I feel with my uh, computer science friends today. So I, I love this tip. I think this might be actually my favorite tip because my best friends were, were made in this way studying together and doing assignments together, particularly when it comes to suffering together in a mutual difficult class. Yeah, I think you mentioned that in a, in a previous episode, Julian. Um, I'm not sure which episode it was, but you mentioned that, um, I think it was, is it pain or trauma um, is the, the factor that really greatly increases uh, friendship right. and makes bonds closer. I think I called it shared trauma. Share trauma, right? That's that's exactly right, and I think I definitely agree with that. I I think that in, in my case as well, that's those are the those are the um the moments when I really uh, bonded most with the the friends I have right now. Um, so we have um our, our library is called the Brody Learning Commons, and um I spent quite a few nights in there with friends um right before you know physics finals or or calculus finals just studying and studying, you know, they have whiteboards in there and we just um, rent out a room for the entire night and we'll just go in there and, and study and review and make sure that we understand everything as best as we can um, before the test tomorrow. And I've definitely had my fair share of uh, share trauma in, in those, um, in those nights and in those environments. So yeah, no, I think it's great. And some of my closest friends have, have been the ones who have stayed up with me those nights. So I think it's great. Um, also, uh, again, the ECE lounge was a great place for me to go. Um, and even though I, I wasn't necessarily studying with a lot of the upperclassmen that were there, um, just seeing what they were going through and then, you know, asking them how are they were doing, like it really gave me an idea of like, oh, this is like what my major is going to be like. And um, yeah, I, I bonded with a lot of them over it. And we like to jab a lot of fun at the professors and everything like that. I think it's great. So if I may share another story before we move on to our tip four, um, I took this chem lab during my first quarter. So this chem lab started at 6 p.m. and ended at, I think, 10 p.m. So late in, like, not late, but pretty, pretty well into the night. And that was the last lot. I had late orientation. And so that was the only lab I could get. And chem labs are pretty difficult because they're definitely skill-based. So this was our first chem lab. So we're entering with zero lab skills. Trust me, AP Chem does not prepare you for college chem labs, right? And then my 
I actually met one of my other close friends at UCI in this lab. Uh, she was also, you know, stuck with this time. And so I saw her waiting for my class in the hallway. And I was like, hey, you're, you're taking this lab, right? And then she's like, yeah, you too. And then so we actually were supposed to partner up for this lab. And so naturally, we just became partners because I started talking to her to her first because she was like the first person I saw who didn't already have a partner. And then we went on to having several other labs together, which was pretty funny. And we also did a lot of assignments together. Um, yeah, and that's how I kind of, you know, built that uh, bond and friendship. It's been pretty sad now because, you know, remote learning and stuff, I don't have labs anymore. And she's all the way back home. She's um, out of state. So yeah, I don't talk to her as much anymore, but those were very fond times. And yes, like that pain was so real, having to walk to my car very at 10 in the freezing cold. Well, I mean, freezing cold as in like um, California, some winter kind of-ish, fall. Yeah. Yeah, so that's I, lots of more summer. <laughs> yeah, yeah. California is, you know, all, all you get, you get all four seasons in a single day kind of a thing. And then most of it is, you know, spring, fall. That's essentially all of California, or at least Southern California, at least. Um, but I, I just want to add one quick thing here. I completely forgot that part of the shared trauma of computer architecture was that the instructor was a working employee, like he was a working professional in the industry. So the only free time he had to teach this class, these two classes, by the way, I don't know if I mentioned this, but both the lower and upper division classes of computer archite architecture are taught by the same person. They're taught by the same instructor. And this guy, he is a working professional in the industry. So the only free time he has to teach this class is in the evening. So I had to take these two very grueling classes in the evenings. And I'm sure I've nailed this point in the podcast several times already, but I am a morning person, like 100% and all be all for, for me is I am a morning person. My brain does not function at night. I, I, my cognitive functions, what are they in the evenings? So I'm thrown into a very theoretically difficult and grueling class, two classes, both of which are at night. And then I'm also born in December. So for the upper division computer architecture class, I had to take a final exam on the day of my birth. And, and it started at like 9 p.m. and it ended at like 10.30, all closer to 11 p.m., a final exam on my birthday. So all that added trauma solidified it so solidified my friendship is, is what I'm trying to say. I just I just wanted to add that there because I completely forgot that these were evening classes until Natalie brought up that she had evening labs and and then wow, just getting a lots of terrible, terrible dark flashbacks now that I'm thinking about my experiences with computer architecture. Ugh, sends shivers down my spine. Yeah, that sounds that sounds really terrible. <laughs> like no doubt. Yeah, I mean, I think that's I, I think that trauma really does um really does bring people together. It's it's kind of unfortunate, right? Because you know, you don't want to go through that trauma in the first place, but it it ends up being um uh, something great that it's sort of a silver lining, I guess. It's something great that brings people together. So, it's interesting. So, obviously, I mentioned earlier that I had to do a lot of studying with my friends um, before finals and it was all very very tough and I wish that I knew um, some of the best strategies to get through them so speaking of studying um, that's why we want to help you here at the study space podcast um, it, it's it's one of our main goals it's one of our core missions and so if you want to help support us um, please share the podcast or tell a friend about it your testimonial to your friends and family is the most helpful thing that you can do for us uh, so right now we're on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, and YouTube. So moving on to our next tip um, for how to make friends in university or college, I think that's something great um, to do is joining clubs or other extracurricular activities, such as research, volunteering, or internships. Uh, so Natalie, do you want to cover this point a little more in depth? Uh, sure, for sure. So 
we have this thing. I don't know about um, JHU or San Jose State, but at UCI, we have this thing that's kind of a congregation of all of the clubs at the beginning of the year at week zero for new students to, you know, find an organization for them to join throughout the year, et cetera, et cetera. And so, I mean, I didn't find the club that I was in, you know, right now through that, but I was say, I was gonna say clubs are for people with the same interests, obviously, cause you know, you point from clubs to meet other people who like, you know, chess or reading classical books. And so it's a lot easier to make friends with other club members because you already have a solid common ground. You know, this is why you came to this, these meetings for. And I think that would be a great foundation for a friendship. So let's talk about your experiences in Rocketry, David. Yeah, so I mean, out of all my experiences that I've had so far, uh, Rocketry by far has been the most positive and impactful experience. Um, club that I've joined so far. I mean, I think it's really, really great. All the people that I've met have been very friendly. They all share the same interests as me, obviously, since they're all doing rocketry. Um, and they're all very smart and, and uh, capable people, I think. So I think that it's really great if you can find something like this, find your rocketry, because I think that if you can find people who are, are like-minded and people who are really interested in the same stuff that you are, that goes a long way, right? Because who knows, maybe in the future, they'll get a job and they'll teach you how to get, you know, a, a job at their company, or they can make an introduction for you or something like that, right? It's really great to have these sort of career connections. But aside from that, you know, like just having friendships with them is great. One of my really closest friends who is my, who's going to be my roommate um, next year, because my, my actually my former roommate is serving in the Korean military, which is um, sort of sort of unfortunate, because I, I love I love him. I mean, he's really great. But um, yeah, my, my my new roommate, he he's really awesome. And I met him through Rocketry. He was able to help me a lot with my homework. And I definitely wouldn't have met him or talked to him um, if I hadn't joined Rocketry because he always sits in the back of the class for um, electrical engineering classes. So I actually wouldn't have talked to him at all. Uh, but now that I do, he's, he's really great. He's a really smart guy. And I'm glad that I met him um, as well as the other people. Um, actually, I, I'm in a group right now um, that's trying to make a delivery robot on campus. Um, and it's sort of just a side activity thing. It's not part of any official organization, but basically um, one of the people in Rocketry just kind of got together and, and gathered all the people that he knew. And we're just kind of building our own delivery robot. And that's that's something really awesome. And I don't think I would have gotten that opportunity if I hadn't met him, right? So um, you guys should go out and, and seek these opportunities. Um, go ahead, join a club. Um, as Natalie said, uh, I think most colleges do some sort of student involvement fair. I know that's what mine did at the beginning of the year. It's really intimidating, but if you can go in and try to find something that you'll really um, that you you find really interesting, um, just go ahead and join, right? And you can always drop it later if you don't enjoy it. But it's a great place to to make friendships. Um, I also found uh, two of my friends through research. Um, I didn't really know them that well before. Um, they're also electrical engineering majors, but I was really able to bond with them during research because we have weekly meetings and we always go in to do stuff together and we have to collaborate. And I think that's really great. Um, I don't want to say share trauma with this because I don't think we went through any trauma. I think we all really enjoyed our research, but we definitely had our fair share of problems that we had to overcome and, you know, working together with them um, is really great. And I think it it's definitely solidified our friendship because, you know, during our downtime, we, we talked about stuff and, and it's really great to work with them. Um, obviously, the, the interest factor comes in again because we are all interested in the same things as well. So um, that's really great. Uh, unfortunately, I wasn't able to make many friends during my internship um, this summer, uh, which is you know pretty tragic because of, of COVID and everything. But yeah, I think that uh, if you get any opportunities during school to, to do research or volunteering or any clubs, yeah, uh, go ahead and take it. I, I have to commend both of you for staying involved with your 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 respective schools, joining clubs and and such like. I did not join clubs when I was in university, and that was that was a bit of a mistake. But also, I I I want to I want to tell myself that it was a conscious decision because I like Natalie, I was a commuter student. So it, it just didn't make sense for me to join clubs at my university when I was driving to and from school every single day, 
especially when all of the clubs would be meeting in the evenings. And I, I mentioned earlier and, and in other episodes, I am not a night person. I am an, I am a morning person. So find me a club that meets at 7.30 a.m., then I, I'm in. I'm in for the parking and, and for, for me to be involved on campus early in the morning. But virtually every single club I know uh, will meet at 7.30 p.m., not 7.30 a.m. So it was difficult for me to justify staying on campus for that long uh, when I could be resting at home. So it's it's it was hard for me to join a club in university because all the clubs were you know in the evenings, um, but I did make many friends, uh, very 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 good friends, very close friends during my internships at NASA. So uh, unfortunately, I was there for I was there for an extended period of time, and and my my intern friends were uh, were only for half of that because I was there for basically two two. Uh, two sessions of the internship just back to back. Um, and, and, and my, the other interns were only there for one session. So I, I was only able to, to stick with them for, for one session. And, and they're all from everywhere else in the country. So, you know, I've got one friend from Canada, I've got one friend from Louisiana and I got another one from Puerto Rico. So they're, they're all doing their own things now. Amazing, amazing work, amazing stuff. I keep up with them in LinkedIn cause they post about their, their work sometimes. But uh, my point is it, in absence of clubs, because I didn't join clubs, you have to find ways to make friends in other places, right? So if you if you are fortunate enough to find yourself in an internship or a job or something, anything really, anything where there are other people involved, uh, and you have the opportunity to make friends, that's an excellent way to make connections, especially when it's professional, right? Because then you not only have your friends, but you also can build your network in that way. Right, especially when it's in a in a professional setting. So, in my internship, I mentioned earlier, I keep up with these people over LinkedIn, which is a professional social network, and uh, made a lot of friends in, in that internship. And and we would we would hang out for lunch regularly. We actually made it a thing. So at at NASA Ames, we have we have uh, somebody who works in the cafeteria who makes his own burritos every Wednesday. So we, we just called it Burrito Wednesday. I'm sure everybody else had called it Burrito yeah. Wednesday or they called it some special name. Um, but he made he made burritos every single Wednesday. It was a special at the cafeteria. And the fun thing about the cafeteria is it's called Megabytes. Don't know if you got the play on words there, but the cafe <laughs> is called. <laughs> that's, that's, the cafe, that's that's yeah, funny. it's hilarious. And when I first heard it, I, I, I got a laugh too, but the cafe at NASA Ames is called Megabytes. Uh, we also have, I don't know if this is ours, but there is a, a bar and it's called, get this, the space bar, which is a triple wordplay, right? Uh, so it's, it's uh, a bar, uh, oh my God. space, and it's <laughs> computers, the space bar. Uh, so I, I love it. I, I love the, I love the places so. here. Great. So it's, you know, we, we, we go to these places and it, it just made for a wonderful, wholesome internship experience that, you know, in which I made friends. And also I, I grew my professional network. Right. So it doesn't have to be clubs. It can be research. Like David said, it can be internships like for me. Right. And, and wherever people are involved, you have the opportunity to make friends and grow your network. Yeah. So something else that I forgot to mention when I was talking about rocketry is that uh, once again, shared trauma is is really awesome. And Julian mentioned that, um, you know, a lot of clubs meet during the nighttime. This is definitely true in my experience. Um, Actually, I was very lucky that I went to a school where pretty much everybody lived on campus since everybody was from different parts of the country. Um, but yeah, I mean, we always met during weekends. So it was just like um, during the mornings, it, I think it was like probably 10, 12, like 10 a.m. or 12 p.m. usually is when we meet and we just work for like, you know, half the day and it'd be really awesome. Um, but sometimes we would have to extend our work into the week. And so we'd always meet during like Thursday night or something at seven. And there was one day where we had to assemble an entire circuit board. And I'm sure you know this, Julian, but entire, uh, assembling an entire circuit board takes quite a long time. And we needed to finish it that night. And uh, it took quite a long time for us. And I think we ended up pulling an almost all nighter. It was like we finished at like four or five a.m. or something like that. And I just ended up staying up because I had a class next day, like at seven a.m. So yeah, that was um that was not um the most fun thing in the world, but at the same time, it was really great because I had um 
two of my friends there with me working on the circuit board. And so we were able to, you know, kind of rotate and do shifts and we were all talking in the downtime and yeah, it was really great. And I think that, um, if you have a chance to do one of these, to have at least one of these experiences, don't do too much because you're probably going to want to die and you won't be very productive the next day. Uh, I speak from experience, but yeah, I mean, it, it's really, it's really great if you get to do these sorts of things and, um, you know, there are people out there willing to sacrifice the same amount of time as you are to make your project work. Yeah, I, I've never worked with circuit boards before, but I have had to program essentially my end, uh, or I'd, I have had to essentially program an entire microprocessor from scratch as a project, which was a terrible, wait, wait, so terrible assembly? experience. Assembly yeah, in assembly. Oh yeah, my God. Uh, so, so we had to do, okay, here's the ridiculous part. I had to do it in, I think, three different ways. I had to do it once in assembly and then a second time in another language called Verilog. Don't know if you've ever worked with Verilog before, but it's it's essentially in another language, not assembly, but is it is just a slight bit higher level uh, than assembly language. I, I think Natalie yeah, yeah. at this point I, is like I know really... What I know she's at this point really is. confused. Yeah, yeah. So I, yeah. I worked with Verilog and essentially had to program an entire microprocessor from scratch. Like I had to, I had to do the logic gates and then from there build the different kind of modules that go into a, a processor, like a like a flip flop and and other sort of transistors, and then from there build like a ripple carry adder, and then from there build different parts of the microprocessor and then combine them all together to make the full microprocessor. And it was a terrible, terrible, terrible experience. Like you said, shared trauma, did this project with a bunch of my friends in computer science who were taking this class with me. That shared trauma led to uh, better friendships. Yeah, that's not, to, that sounds brutal. Oh my God. <laughs> yeah, terrible experience. So to move on to tip number five, is to uh, basically essentially check up each other occasionally, right? We all know that it's it's hard to keep up with people um, when you don't talk to them on a daily basis. You know, sometimes you 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 go to class. Uh, let's say it's like calculus or something that's sort of general, right? You go to calculus or or you know an entry level biology or any other class or history or whatever, and then you move on to your actual actual major studies, right? And then you sort of lose touch with those friends that you that you met in your general classes, which is something that definitely happened to me. One thing that you can do is to periodically check up on your friends, you know, check if they're doing okay, check on their well being, right? This is something that I that I did in university, and I still do to this day. Actually, what's funny is that I actually did I actually did this. I actually checked up on my supervisor from when I worked at the university library. And he really appreciated that I, I thought about him because I, I haven't worked at the library since my second year of university. I think I, I, I think I left at, uh, let's see here. I worked there for like a year and a half. So I, I, I think I, uh, let's think here. Yeah, I, I, so I left at the beginning of my second year of university. So I literally have not really met him ever since I left that job. But for some reason, I thought about him and given this COVID thing, it was it just felt right to reach out to him. And I, I reached out to my supervisor from from my library job. And he really appreciated that we started talking a little bit um, over the phone. And, and that was just a, it was great to reconnect. But I, I also did this in university, I also, uh, you know, reached out with some friends I met in calculus, because uh, Again, to 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 really drill in the the shared trauma idea, calculus two. I'm pretty sure Natalie can relate on this uh, on this one. Uh, calculus two is a very very difficult class. Don't know why particularly because calculus three was so much easier for some odd reason. But calculus two was very very tough, and we had a, a lot of shared trauma in calculus two. So I wanted to keep up with those friends, and so I I would. I would message them occasionally. Uh, they actually helped me move from one apartment to another, and they also helped me move out from one apartment to another. So, uh, it, you know, they, I, I keep up with those friends, and that's just a matter of periodically checking up on them uh, after a while to reconnect and to rekindle that friendship. And oftentimes, that that initiative that you take to reconnect with somebody after you've you've kind of lost touch can can make your friendship even stronger than when you left it because it shows that you 
that you care. It shows that you're concerned and it shows that you haven't really forgotten each other. And if you can rekindle that friendship, no matter how long it's been since you've talked, then I think that's just a testament to, to how friendly you are and how strong a friendship can be unexpectedly. Right. So, um, you know, I want to hear, I want to hear both of your thoughts and any stories that you might have with respect to periodically checking up on your friends, uh, after some time. Yeah. So I personally have, um, a sort of experience with this as well. Um, Andre, who was on the podcast, I think a few months ago, um, he was really good at checking up on me during, um, the school year that he knew that I was stressed because I always talked about it with my friends. And I was like, dude, I have a lot of homework and this assignment, this class is killing me and you know, I'm not doing so well. And he would always check up on me after. Um, you know, Andre's, I, I think I'm, I'm, I'm in the right for saying this, but Andre's a pretty tough guy. Like he's, you know, he's like always really hard and he's brutally honest and this sort of stuff. But um, he, he actually is like really, really caring. He's a great friend. Um, and he was always willing to check in on me, um, you know, just like, just asking me like, Hey, like, how are you doing? Like, I heard you're struggling in this. Like, are you okay? And then he'd encourage me and say like, Oh, you know, you'll be fine. And, and you'll be, you'll be, you'll do fine in that class. And he'd always reassure me. And that really helps. I think um, it really helps because it knows that it, it makes you know that like, Oh yeah, at least there's someone out there who actually does care about me and, and someone out there who's willing to ask me how I'm doing and just check up on me, even if you're doing totally fine. Um, and that's really encouraging when you go to a school that's like really, really tough. And, or when you're taking a class, it's really, really tough because, um, we talk a lot about the shared trauma, but shared trauma has an effect on you. I think, you know, we, we, we um, we think a lot about the shared part, uh, which is, you know, the silver lining, but the trauma part is not really great. And, um, that does definitely damage your, your mental health. And so you have to keep that in check, um, make sure that you're doing okay. Yeah, definitely. And um, when you're taking a class as tough as analytical, analytical chem, which people refer to by the first four letters plus chem, uh, you kind of make really good friends. So especially, I took analy analytical chem in my third quarter of my first year, which is pretty early as uh, when I was doing research, I found it, it to be pretty early. And it was a really, really tough class. And it, what made it tougher was COVID and remote learning. So I would check up on my friends in addition to studying with my friends because I know I was having a really, really, really tough time with that class. And so I know for sure my friends are going to have a tough time as well because it is one of those weed out classes for chem majors and I was so glad I was able to kind of check up on my friends and kind of you know share our struggles and complaints together I think that really helped me form a much deeper bond bond with them and I'm so grateful for that class and now because of them I think partly because of them I grew this really deep love for analytical chem and yeah and if I weren't doing medicine, I think my backup would be in chem engineering or material engineering so I could contribute to that community. Yeah, so going into our, our next tip um, is, this is tip number six, which is the final tip, is uh, planning hangouts. So obviously, we, we think a lot about, you know, like, oh, you know, you have friends you can study with and, you know, you take classes with and you do rocketry and research and all this stuff. But we have to think, um, you know, especially when, when you go to a school and, and you're far away from home, we have to also think about the side of, you know, just socializing, right? Just talking and having fun and, and, and not really thinking about school, right? Because that's that's part of what friendships are. I know that we can sometimes, like, you know, when, when, when um, times are really busy and it's final seasons and everything, that's all you're thinking about. But we do have to realize that it is nice sometimes to just, you know, hang out with friends. And so planning hangouts is... I'd say really important um, to making sure that you're okay and you're, you know, relatively uh, relaxed and not too stressed about school. Um, I was able to hang out a lot with my friends um, during the times when we weren't really um, too engaged in school because what happens is, um, at least at my, at my school, uh, when midterm season starts, it never ends. Like as 
after like kind of like the first month of school, really, we started taking our first midterms. And then after that, we had more midterms and more midterms. And every week, it seemed like there was a midterm or, or some project or something of some sort that was making us extremely busy. And so I'm um, finding time to really hang out, especially at the beginning. And then like, you know, at that one week where we don't really have anything to study for, that's really going to help you out. And I think, um, Anybody will say this. I mean, I think it really does help relieve stress and, and make sure that you're not driving yourself insane. Um, I was able to explore Baltimore, which is a really great city. Um, I went to I actually went to a a Vietnamese cultural event, which is pretty surprising because there's not a lot of Vietnamese people in Baltimore in the Maryland area. But I was able to go to that. And that was really awesome. And I also went to a lot of movies uh, at a local um, at a local movie theater. And that was really awesome as well. Um, I was able to spend some time with my friends socializing and then we had dinner afterwards. So, you know, just try to organize as many of these events as you can. It's really awesome to have someone who's designated to kind of set up everything because uh, I know our group had one and she was like, she's really awesome. Like she, we call her the mom of the group because she's always, you know, um, willing to, to help organize and set up everything and make sure that um, everything is accounted for. But yeah especially if you're going in large groups. I think it's really great. It's kind of hilarious how you have in your friend group, you have one friend who you call the mom of the group. It, it, I think it's funny because I'm sort of the mom of my friend group. And and th this is different because I I, I have, I don't like going outside. It's, it's just, that, that's the introvert of me talking here. I don't like going outside, even though we did hang out uh, outdoors in in San Jose, downtown San Jose has a lot to offer. We have a we have a couple of boba shops uh, across the street from the university, and I love boba. I joke about this a lot when I meet new people. It's that like uh, I, I don't drink water. Like ninety percent of my hydration comes from either coffee or boba, which I'm I'm fairly certain at this point is is probably fact. Uh, I I don't drink water necessarily. I drink coffee primarily and then boba comes next which is terrible but hey that's that's my vice in life um so boba shops across the across the street from the university hung out there studied there of course there's also a starbucks on campus and across the street from the university of course i've studied there and hung out there as well there are many great restaurants nearby the university so we would walk there after class or um whatever to to get a bite to eat but to, to go back to what I was saying earlier, I don't like going outside. So I like having people over at my place. And then what happens is I end up cooking for everybody because I actually really do enjoy cooking. And then that's when everybody started calling me mom. Cause, because I was just cooking for everybody all the time. And then people would, you know, people of, of course ask to like help or like, Hey, like we can just bring something over. But I genuinely enjoyed cooking for everybody. It was just fun. Cause then like, while I'm cooking, people would be playing around and, and we would talk. Um, usually these would be for study, study groups, by the way. So before the studying actually happened, I would primarily cook something and then we would, we would goof around we would talk and then eat. And then we would begrudgingly start our studying after we were full, which in hindsight probably didn't add to our productivity because we probably were facing a lot of uh, food coma afterwards, but that's okay. We got through university just fine. But yeah, it's funny that you have a mom in your group. I'm the mom of my friend group. I am definitely the mom of my friend group as well, especially in terms of the driving. So most of my friends are, they, they dorm at school and I'm the only commuter most of the time. So I would have my red CRV and I would pick them all up and I would drive them to UTC, which is across the street from UCI where they have all the um, boba shops and the food stalls and everything's beautiful there. And I would drive them over there. And I remember once so vividly, it's such a beautiful memory that my friends from high school plus uh, the friend I made from college, we were and David too, because he was visiting from uh, Baltimore. And we were all just sitting around, um, around this huge table having lunch together. And it was probably my favorite moment from UCI, at my uh, my first year from UCI. It was so fun. Everyone was laughing and it just felt so timeless. Like everything just froze. And definitely when 
you're going when you've graduated from uh, college and university you're going to look um, back so fondly on these moments because obviously yeah you'll remember the tra trauma and stuff the shared trauma but you'll also remember all the beautiful times you've had with your friends and those are such priceless memories in my opinion at least so i i heard two things there that piqued my interest uh, or maybe two, it was two. I lost count because because I'm I'm focusing on these two in particular. One, you drive a CRV, also a red CRV, because my first car was a red CRV, and my next no car way. now is also a CRV. <laughs> my car right now is a yeah. white CRV, but my first one was a red CRV. That, I just think they're that was hilarious. So spacious. I don't know. They're just so useful. I love yeah, them. It's a wonderful car. Two, uh, you said there was a boba shop across the street from UCI. Is this Cha for Tea? Oh my gosh! Yes. Okay. We have such chicken too oh, if you've ever tried it wonderful yes no i i went to chaffer tea for the first time when i was like 12 or 13 uh when a cousin of mine took me to uci because he went to uci um so so he he took me to uci to explore the university because i never really knew what college was so he he took me to explore uci and then we bought boba afterwards at chaffer tea um at the university center which was fun so you said there was a boba shop across the street from the university and i was like hey is that chaffer tea because because i've been there and i love that place it is, it is such a beautiful and peaceful place. Funny thing is that we always go with the intention of studying there because it, it's a plaza. You know, there's a lot of shops around it, but there's are also there are also a lot of chairs and places for you to sit and study. And we always try to study there. But, you know, conversations get interesting and we get distracted very easily. So, yeah, we just ended up, you know, talking about boys, about movies, about music and never and we never studied chemistry at all which is very very funny in my opinion yeah it's it's nice to go out with a goal to study and then you don't study and then that just ends up being one of the best days ever it, it's it's backwards and it's probably not good but hey i got through university just fine with plenty of those moments yeah i um i mean i think that at the end of the day you know those moments are, are really what you remember. I mean, I, I definitely, I definitely still think that the uh, shared trauma is something you'll remember for years to come. I still remember my shared trauma that I had with all my friends um, in high school and uh, in college. It's exactly the same, um, but definitely the great moments are also things that you'll remember. I, I'm very, uh, I have very fond memories of you know, of just for especially for my birthday. I went out. Um, I was very lucky that I was able to go out that weekend with my friends and we just saw a movie and, and a dinner and that was really great. And so um, those moments are what you'll remember. And I think that you should try to have them because college is not just all about studying and, and, you know, like doing super well in classes and, and getting, you know, ready for a job. That's definitely a huge part of it. And that's why you should go to college. But I think that uh, it's also very important to enjoy your time there, right? Because you only get one college experience. Yeah, beyond being a student, you're also human. So it's perfectly normal to take some time for yourself. Uh, we're, we are social animals, no matter how much we identify as introverts, we are still social animals. So we, you know, maybe, maybe Natalie and I feel drained after hanging out. But the fact is, that doesn't mean we don't enjoy hanging out. It's definitely one of those great moments, like you said, David, uh, and like you said, Natalie, it's one of those timeless moments that you'll remember pretty much for the rest of your life, just because it's it's a moment in time where a lot of work should be done, but you've you've you somehow escaped all of that for for a, a, a little bit of the day to be with your friends, to enjoy yourself. and And that's human. That's part of being a person, it's okay to have fun once in a while, once in a while, even if you are introverted, if you can find uh, a couple friends that that you can that you can hang out with, it doesn't have to be outside, you can do what I do, just hang out indoors, uh, bring something over or make some food, and then have a have a great time. And then that is that those moments are going to make up a lot of what you remember from university. Uh, you're 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 definitely going to forget a lot that you're going to learn in class. So you might as well fill that empty space with good memories that you can make with some friends, right? Definitely. Talking about this just makes me miss my friends even more because I haven't seen them because of whole, the whole COVID thing. But yeah. 
Yeah, COVID is really putting a hold on that. And I feel really bad for the students who are going to come into university and it's going to be totally online because it's going to be very, very hard to make friends uh, with COVID. But maybe we'll do an episode on that. Maybe. <laughs> yeah, but that'll do it for this episode of the Study Space podcast. Um, thank you all so much for listening. Uh, we know that there are countless podcasts being published every day and you decided to listen to ours in particular. It really means a lot to us that you've given us your time to listen to two or in this case, three students ramble on about school.